Can you feel the acceleration? OpenAI announces that it's going to release its next reasoning model, O3, as well as O4 Mini in the coming weeks, and GPT-5 in the coming months after that. And also, they said, that GPT-5 is better than they had thought. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Quick announcement before we dive in. For a while, some of you have been asking me for an ad-free version of the show. Obviously, there are a million platforms that allow you to do that now. And so I am happy to share that I will be now offering an ad-free version via Patreon. At the beginning, the Patreon will just be for the ad-free version, but over time, if people are interested, I'll potentially expand it to bonus content and interactive stuff and all the things that Patreons normally have. But for now, I'm just trying to match the set of you who have said things like, I would pay to not hear the ads, which I totally understand as a listener. You can find it at patreon.com slash AI Daily Brief. Now to our topics, though. As I was prepping the show, we got an announcement from Sam Altman that was pretty interesting, and I think supports the feeling that many of us are having that we are definitely in another moment of acceleration. Altman tweeted, change of plans. We're going to release O3 and O4 Mini after all, probably in a couple of weeks, and then do GPT-5 in a few months. There are a bunch of reasons for this, but the most exciting one is that we're going to be able to make GPT-5 much better than we originally thought. We also found it harder than we thought it was going to be to smoothly integrate everything, and we want to make sure we have enough capacity to support what we expect to be unprecedented demand. We were really able to improve on what we previewed for O3 in many ways. I think people will be happy. So then we are weeks away from updated OpenAI reasoning models, and it sounds like just months away from their first model that integrates reasoning and non-reasoning models altogether natively. They definitely seem confident in the quality. Not only are they moving up releases, but they're also explicitly saying that things are better than they thought. This is the opposite of trying to hedge expectations. This is going in the other direction. Sam is talking about unprecedented demand, which coming off of their insane announcement that in the last week alone, 150 million ChatGPT users have generated over 700 million images is a pretty reasonable bet, but still it's extremely notable. What's more, you have folks on the OpenAI team who are even giving away some little hints. Rohan Pandey writes, if you enjoyed reading Deep Seek Chains of Thought, I think you'll absolutely love watching O3 do its thing. Not only is this interesting in terms of giving us some insight around how O3 functions, but it's also an OpenAI staffer explicitly acknowledging that people really liked seeing Deep Seek thinking. When someone responded, still waiting for the open source release, which you'll remember OpenAI said that they were going to release their first open weights model in some time, Rohan said also on its way, which at the risk of overreading into a small choice of wording, suggests that none of these are that open source release. Some folks out there just started speculating around or sharing what they wanted out of these models. Arc Prize president Greg Kamrat writes, My wish list, reasoning by token limits, not buckets, parameter for samples, pricing from day one, reasonable rate limits, webhook support. I'm okay giving up latency, I want horsepower. Maybe even a more common reaction was the assumption that this was about competitive pressure. Khalifa Mana writes, Bunch of reasons equals Gemini 2.5 and Sonnet 3.7 beating them in just about everything. Entrepreneur Bindu Reddy writes, Google is forcing OpenAI to change plans. OpenAI will change plans and release O3 and O4 Mini instead of shipping GPT-5, which was supposed to combine all their models. The big reason is Gemini 2.5 Pro, a thinking model that is very good at benchmark maxing, being number one on benchmarks. Unfortunately, we have found that all thinking models don't work very well on complex real-world coding tasks and don't do well at tool use. Plus, no one has PhD-level reasoning tasks that the benchmarks measure these models on. All this means that Sonnet is still number one IRL. Hopefully, Google and OpenAI will train better base models shortly. Now, one thing that's not clear, Bindu is assuming that the change of plans Altman is talking about is GPT-5 not combining the reasoning and non-reasoning models. But that's not super clear to me. Although it is one possible read, I'm sure we'll get clarification there. And in any case, more models are on their way. For my money, though, to the extent that OpenAI is feeling competitive pressure, it is not from their American peers. It's from DeepSeek and from China. Given that basically all of China is rallying around DeepSeek and integrating their approaches into other models as well, I understand why that might be making them feel a little pressure. Whatever the reason for the change of plans, I am here for it. Can't wait to try these new models. Bring on the acceleration, baby. Next up, what was supposed to be our title story in the headlines, there are more rumblings that Microsoft is pulling back from data center investment. Bloomberg is reporting that Microsoft is getting cold feet about data center construction with delays or cancellations affecting six sites worldwide. Sources say that sites in Indonesia, the UK, Australia, Illinois, North Dakota, and Wisconsin have been impacted. Earlier this year, market analysts reported that Microsoft had canceled options on data center leases, representing a couple of hundred megawatts of capacity. The number later ballooned to two gigawatts as TD Cowan rumored that Microsoft had passed on additional options. The research firm said that these deals likely represented, quote, data center oversupply relative to its current demand forecast. 
Just prior to the CoreWeave IPO, we learned that Microsoft had failed to pick up a $12 billion option with the company. This being a huge problem for CoreWeave as Microsoft represented over 60% of their revenue. OpenAI stepped in to fill the void, inking a deal of the same size a week before the company went public. Aside from any potential drama there, Microsoft seems to be sending a pretty clear signal that they don't want to be expanding their data center footprint in the current environment. A spokesperson for the company failed to explain the moves, stating, We plan our data center capacity needs years in advance to ensure we have sufficient infrastructure in the right places. As AI demand continues to grow and our data center presence continues to expand, the changes we have made demonstrate the flexibility of our strategy. Now, you might remember back in February, during his interview on the Dwarkesh podcast, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella guaranteed that data centers will be overbuilt. He compared the infrastructure to internet cable and even railways, noting that overbuilding is a constant feature of frontier tech. He said that this is why, quote, I'm so excited to be a leaser. Now, it's understandable if Microsoft doesn't feel the need to be left holding the bag with excess infrastructure, but some of these deals represent serious sunk costs. The company has already spent $262 million to expand their site in Wisconsin, with $40 million going to the concrete pour alone. The total cost of the project is $3.3 billion, but a large portion of that will be the purchase of GPUs to fill the racks. The company claimed that the construction is merely delayed, not canceled, with the data center to come online next year. Microsoft said that the $1.7 billion Indonesian site is also on pause, but will be completed in the second quarter of 2025. The company is still committed to their $80 billion of spend on AI infrastructure during the fiscal year, which winds up in June, but have flagged that the following year should feature a slowdown in CapEx as the focus shifts from new construction to fitting out existing facilities. CoreWeave CEO Michael Entrader said that the slowdown is more specific to Microsoft than the broader industry, commenting, it's pretty localized and their relationship with OpenAI has changed. So it stands to reason that there would be some noise. At Socia, a director at intelligence firm Data Center Hawk said he's observing a shift in priorities across the industry. He claimed that AI companies are tweaking their data center plans to cut costs and prioritize projects that can come online sooner, adding, you may have initially thought one data center project would be the fastest speed to market, but then you realize that the labor, supply chain, and power delivery wasn't as quick as you thought, then you would have to shift in the short term to focus on other markets. An analyst going by Tech Fund on X claimed that this is precisely the issue Microsoft has run into, posting, Microsoft Architect on the company's data center build-out plan, still very bullish. They want to make sure that every data center they're building is profitable when it lights up, while the projects that they canceled because they wouldn't be ready fast enough were immediately taken over by other hyperscalers such as AWS. Candy Factory responded, well, if Amy, referring to CFO Amy Hood, is worried about profitability on day zero, you can smell the cash burn intolerance. So what are the possibilities here? One is that Microsoft thinks that the data center build-out is overblown and that we're in a bubble. That's certainly what a lot of people are trying to make of this. It looks to me more like, though, that Microsoft, likely led by Amy Hood, yes, just doesn't want to be the weakest firm out there if demand starts collapsing. I think it's far less likely that we're seeing some native slowdown in demand, especially given how absolutely hungry for power companies like OpenAI seem to be. But I think, frankly, every company is thinking about the potential for tariff-induced recession. I think big companies are starting to think about cost-cutting because of that, and I think Microsoft seems more worried than most about the risk of demand falling short. Anyway, worth continuing to watch, but that's my read for now. Finally today, TSMC has reportedly formed a tentative partnership with Intel to revitalize the struggling U.S. chipmakers' manufacturing wing. The information reports that the two companies will form a joint venture to operate Intel's chip foundries. Other unnamed U.S. semiconductor firms will also take part in the new partnership. Talks are in the earliest stages, and the exact structure of the venture hasn't been settled, but this still is very good news for Intel. Reports state that TSMC could take a 20% stake in the new organization. They would provide Intel with the information to build TSMC's chips on their equipment, along with training assistance for Intel personnel. Partnering with TSMC was the widely reported preference of the Trump administration earlier this year, to avoid losing the only U.S.-owned chip producer. Keeping TSMC as a minority stakeholder would also ensure that a foreign company doesn't control the one-time U.S. industry champion. Since then, the firm has appointed industry veteran Lip Bhutan as CEO and given him a mandate to turn the company around. Earlier this week at the Intel Vision conference, Tan said that he was planning to spin off assets that weren't core to the mission of the company. During his keynote speech, he said, As we strengthen our Intel products, we are equally committed to building a great foundry. Global demand for chip production is growing, and you need supply chains that are flexible, resilient, and secure. Intel Foundry plays a crucial role. We will continue to advance our foundry strategy to meet our needs. Now, Intel chip foundries have been bleeding cash for years. The division posted an operating loss of $13.4 billion last year, and the company says they don't expect to turn a profit until 2027. Amid all this news, Intel was a singular spot of green in a sea of absolute red yesterday as tech stocks sold off. The stock was up 6.6% on the news, with investors likely thinking that any plan is a good plan as Intel struggles to survive. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.